Our first guest this week is Mr. Joe Grimes. He's the CEO of Tribal Rides Incorporated, XNDA is their stock symbol. Joe, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Don. Well, it's been an exciting time talking to you about self-driving cars and about Tribal Rides. But for those who are seeing you for the first time, tell us again what you do. Tribal Rides, our website is tribalrides.us. We're a technology play in the transportation field. Um, we have two phases of a product that we're trying to roll out. The first phase is associated with some very interesting and, and new technologies for shared rides. I'd like to talk about that a little bit more later, as well as establishing a base of technology for self-driving cars that we also have patents in. Very exciting time to be in self-driving cars. It really is, and you're seeing more of it, more and more of it in the news every day. There's not a day that goes by where there's not a news article about self-driving cars. Now, you, we had a conversation before going on the air where you said you're expanding your advisory group. Tell us about that. Sure. Uh, last time we were on your show, we introduced, or Steve Ritako did our CTO, advisory group at tribalrides.us. And it was an invitation to your viewers to join, to try to become part of the solution in both shared ride and self-driving cars, to be aware of and participate in this new uh, revolution that's coming online. And I want to thank them. We had a lot, of, a lot of interest and we've got some dialogues going on. What that prompted us to do is reach out to uh, what they call automotive visionaries in the industry. And we are, we're working with a couple right now to bring them on the advisory board. And I hope by the next time I'm on, I can, I can introduce them and you can see really the innovation that's occurring real time in this industry. So basically, you're interacting with the people who would be end users of your of your uh, software. Yeah. So two two groups of people. One are are those disenfranchised Uber and Lyft drivers who see that we can bring to them some some better technologies. And the second is those visionaries who are watching this transition between uh, traditional driving and self driving cars and what they see is coming forward in that space. So yeah, very exciting. Now, you also mentioned in this conversation we had uh, before going on the air about a phase one rollout. Uh, what does that mean? So uh, our CTO, Steve, and our, and our development group are focused first on developing those kinds of technologies that will aid shared ride drivers. So as part of this advisory group, as well as people that we've had contact with, some are not that pleased with the way they're treated by current large shared ride companies. I think we all know them, 14, 15 million drivers. And they've expressed a, a desire to improve it both from the driver perspective and by the rider perspective. Let me give you an example. So a couple of fathers had sent us emails on this advisory group and they said, you know, um, it would be really ideal for my 17-year-old daughter to have a set of drivers that we trust and, uh, and identified as well as a girlfriends of theirs that they're comfortable with having shared rides with. And right now in the current space, you can't do that. And to uh, enable that interaction between those, those comfortable, shared, familiar drivers and, and those um, uh, riders, as well as when that repeat business occurs for those drivers and for those riders, for them to be able to establish a baseline price for those rides instead of it just being demand and supply, right? Establish a really tight knit community associated with that driver. So basically you're also serving the shared rides where there are actual drivers in the cars as opposed to the self-driving aspect. Right. And so we think that that helps us establish a base, allows us to map out routes, uh, fees, and really develop that interim solution that caters to the driver while, while providing the rider with a lot more capabilities. Well, you know, my mother always told us never get into a car with a strange person, yet that's what people with Uber and Lyft are really doing. That's right. That's right. And so we, we think that this next, this next round of innovation will really um, help that, especially given COVID and what's going on in this space today. It's a strange world that we live in now. Um, you had mentioned on a previous program a stock symbol change. How's that coming along? It's coming well. So we're knee deep in it, uh, working with the SEC, have another round of uh, requirements to provide them. And uh, 
at the moment, I see absolutely no reason why it can't continue to go forward and for us to, to obtain that new ticker, which I think we need. And then um, along with that, the, um, the uh, name change of the company. So very, very exciting time, lots of things going on. And, and of course, we're working on our audits and uh, pushing quickly forward the development path, which is really necessary. Now you had anticipated uh, your first revenues to occur in the fourth quarter of this year. Is that still on target? It is absolutely on target, um, and we sure hope we can beat it. But right now, that looks extremely uh, challenging but doable. So we're excited about it. You know, one of the things that that also has occurred in the last couple of uh, weeks is uh, more and more updates on self-driving cars and what Tesla is doing. And I had a couple of articles showing that there are now 29 states in the U.S. Mm. that have rules and laws accepting self-driving cars whether it by bills or by executive action. So it's coming online uh, and it's coming online fast. Once again, the company's Tribal Rides Incorporated, the current stock symbol is XNDA. Joe, always a pleasure having you on the program. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much, Don, and thank the viewers.